HiSec Buyback offers a 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. Welcome to Eve Online Industry Talk with Kenneth Feld, and I'm Nick Bison, and this is continuing our indie series. Today we're going to kind of go over, we're not going to kind of, we're going to go over invention, which is kind of a step to get to that T2 production side. And there's a number of different pieces, parts, but welcome, Kenneth, CSM 17 flavor. Good Sunday morning there, Nick. It's kind of a, I think we're doing the takeover of TIS this week, aren't we? Something like that. That's it. We'll get it, we'll get it rolling. You probably can see on the screen that Kenneth's already got pulled up a place where we're, we're probably going to end up spending a good deal of time, which is looking at the invention, creating, you know, from that blueprint researched or not, and where we go from there. Yeah, that's exactly right. And even you'll see some yellow blueprints there that even before the show, you weren't even sure what they are, but they definitely are intertwined with invention. And those are the, I think they're legally called relics, but those are how you reverse engineer and make the Tech 3 ships, Tech 3, not modules, the, the, the things that you put into the cruisers and also Tech 3 destroyers. Now the destroyers, you only do the hull, for the cruisers, you do the hull and then all the different, one of the four modifiers that go into the hull. And those are all use the same exact skills as invention. It uses the same interface in the industry window. They go really quick compared to invention, but it's the same everything. So I was going to go over that kind of at the same time. Good idea because, uh, you know, yesterday I threw in some tech one inventions to go to two on some ships that won't be ready till 15 minutes after the show. So won't be able to show the finished probability on that, but that's a really important thing is, is it's not a guarantee. It's a probability of success that we're going to be covering also. Yeah, absolutely. And that probability has a price tag to go along with it. Not always on the good side. And we'll, we'll get into that because the online calculators only calculate and tell you for a invention that succeeded because there's no way that they can RNG the, the losses properly, but you still have to account for them because they can skew the numbers so much so that what looks good on paper actually turns out to be not all that great. So... We'll get into that. I just wanted to kind of go over the interface a little bit first. And then from there, we can kind of get into the numbers. And I'm going to talk in a lot of generalities today because everyone's going to be a little bit different. And on top of that, as you said, there is no absolute. There's no 100% invention available. So it's literally you put it in. You hit the install button and then you wait a certain amount of time and you click another button to deliver and it either says succeeded or womp, womp, womp. And you don't even get a parting gift, nothing. It's just a nope. Yeah, so, the, uh, that blueprint copy, any data cores and any decryptors are lost, just gone. Correct. Now, yeah. we started off talking about this series about the old days compared to now. One of the huge changes to invention and one of the reasons that Tech 2 BPOs are essentially worthless now, and, and we'll get into that too a little bit, is the fact that invention used to take a full run blueprint copy in order to get the max amount of runs from your Tech 2 BPC. So we'll, we'll kind of go over that I don't know that I'm going to have a good one to show you, but as a, as a general idea, if you were making a, a shield booster and you wanted to make a shield booster tech two BPC in order to invent, you would need a max run shield booster to put in, to get your 10 run tech two BPC. 
So say, I think it was a thousand runs. So if you only had 500 runs on that blueprint copy, when you went to do the invention, you would only get a five run tech two BPC. So it would cut down your runs. So everyone had max run T1 BPCs to use for invention. In 2014, when Creus came about, now one run of a Tech One BPC is one invention job. So all those thousands, I literally threw away over 200,000 blueprints, just hit right click trash it because they weren't needed anymore. If I had a thousand run blueprint copy, then I could do a thousand invents off of that now. So a, a lot of changes happened in, in that regard, but that just made decryptors and that kind of stuff even that much more important. And we'll talk about those as well. Yeah, because decryptors in addition to changing the probability of success potentially also can change METE or runs. So that, that can see where that made a huge dent on the T2 BPO earners. Correct. Yeah, because the copy time, essentially your copy time went from a ton down to next to nothing. As you can see, this Inquisitor, I put it in a half an hour ago and my copy is already available. So it was only a 30 minute, whereas if I had put in a max run, it was a couple days. So I just went from a couple day copy to a single copy. Now ships were a little bit different because of the fact that you only got one run, so it didn't matter what you used for the invention. But for the other ones, it did matter quite a bit. So we're gonna start off now, we're gonna deliver this copy, and then we're gonna look at what it takes to uh, do an invent on this real quick. All right, we've got focus on that screen and we see a delivery. Yep, so there's my delivery, there's my original blueprint right there, and here's my copy. So I'm gonna right click on this copy and click use blueprint. So now my blueprint is now up and this is for manufacturing. If you come over here and click this one, now it's for invention. And we're in the Tranquility Research Lab. It's in my item hanger. Now the reason this is redded out is because this actually invents into a purifier, which is a stealth bomber or a deacon which is the frigate logistics ship. So we're gonna use this as a purifier right now, just for sake of argument. So with no other modifiers, you get an ME2 TE4 blueprint. And it takes, what, eight and a half hours with my skills in this thing. Those are my skills there. It shows you all the modifiers for TE. And then for your cost, it gives you the system index and the rig modifiers, the gross cost, the facility tax, and your total job cost all in the mouse over there. Okay. And then the input items are still in the same location on the left side of the screen. Correct. And I don't have any here, so they're just going to show up. But this spot down here, this is a spot most people probably don't use. And if you mouse over it, now these are all grayed out because I don't actually have any here. If they were here and available, they would turn white. And we're gonna talk about these in detail a little bit later, but all you would do to select it is just mouse over whichever one you wanted. And we'll go with optimized attainment and click on this. And now that decryptor shows up and all of a sudden, instead of a one run two four, now we have a one run or I mean, sorry, a three run, three, two. So we go back and look at this decryptor, mouse over and go up here. We'll see that it increased the probability by 90%. It increased the run modifier by two. It increased the material modifier by one and it decreased the time modifier by two. So right now, if you look at this right here, it says success rate is 83%. So that is quite good. And if you mouse over that, it gives you your skills for that as well. This pilot has all fives for everything. We'll talk about how skills affect it when we go to the websites. But there it is right there at 83%. If we take this decryptor out and we go to, no, 
optional item and we mouse back over, now it's at 43%, okay? So keep that in mind. That's how much a decryptor can change what you're getting out of it. Now, if we go to, is it augmentation? No, this one, the original augmentation. Yeah, if you go to the original augmentation decryptor and we select that, now you went from 43% to 26%. ME zero, but you get 10 runs for every invention that goes. So then you've got to look at it more in the long term. Whereas this, you're going to get essentially one out of every four inventions. So if you do, let's see, I've got to make the math work out here. So 86, 9, 10, 8, 12. Yeah, that's, that's going to be rough no matter how you cut it. But so if we did eight inventions, I would get essentially two successes and six fails. So total, I would have 20 runs over two blueprints. If you went back to this other blueprint that we looked at, our other decryptor, decrypt. so now it's 83%. So if you did those same eight runs, you would expect seven of them to pass, to succeed. You'd be right on the cusp between six and seven. But if you got seven, seven runs or seven blueprints at three runs each is actually 21 runs total. Runs, total. Yeah. So you get one additional run and you're at ME3 instead of ME0. And I okay. guess one of the things to mention there is you mentioned about the probability of success that gets increased. Now, if you're like me, doesn't matter what you do, you're going to be have about a 25% at best. So it happens. Right. But the other thing that you have to look at is the price of those decryptors, because this ship only cost about 19 million total. And if one decryptor is say four or 5 million and one decryptor is half a million, then using all those decryptors, pass or fail, could push the price out of existence for you where you could push yourself out of profit if you use that decryptor, even though you ended up with the same number of runs. And that we'll also talk about when we get to the website. I just kind of wanted to go over how to look at the industry screen and how to read it and what you're going to get out of it. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, the acquisition of the... Uh decryptors a lot of exploration is one way if you don't want to go to the store and buy them right and honestly i don't do they mostly come in wormholes or is that exploration everywhere exploration everywhere. i've got them in 0.5 and 0.6 systems in high sec recently so they still exist granted it's not common but it happens okay fair enough so the other thing that I wanted to show you skill-wise on this particular window is if you mouse over this skill down here, it will show you the required skills to do this job. Now you notice I have, you probably can't see it on the screen, but there's a little star in the middle. That little star means you have max skills. But if you don't have that star and you mouse over this, it will only tell you what is required as a minimum to do this invention, you have to mouse over the success chance to see the actual skills that you were using to make this invention work. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to shift and we're going to do a tech three one real quick. Okay. So this looks very much the same as the other one. This one, when you bring it up, Let's see, do I have to click? Yeah, it lists all four. Yeah, it's showing all the ship possibilities you've got to select or which one you want to select. Oh, Kenneth, did we lose your voice? Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I must have slipped off the button there. So yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be TAS if we didn't do that two or three times. There you go. Off the rails. Anyway, so it shows the four ships, one blueprint, can invent any of the four ships that you want. And all you have to do is just like, so if we want to make confessors, there we go. But this is called reverse engineering. It's 
functionally exactly the same as invention. It's just tech three, so they call it reverse engineering and you use little yellow blueprints, which are also drops from exploration somewhere, mostly wormholes as far as I know. Yeah, I haven't, I don't recall seeing them drop anywhere else. All right, and as you see here, it uses a standard data cores, mechanical engineering and plasma physics. So nothing out of the ordinary there and all your same decryptors work just the same. So we'll go with the optimized attainment again, and it works just the same. Let me let me turn that off so we can look at what the raw one is. Interesting question just popped up, and I don't recall the answer. But Rain in the Dark's asking, do you still need to be in low sec or a wormhole to do a T3 BPC? I don't think so, because I'm in perimeter right now. It's not... It's not giving me a start button. Yeah, because just my input material is not met. But I'm pretty sure you can do them in high sec now. So rain check, that, that uh, is a definite maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try one later. But I, I don't know of any restrictions on them anymore. Now, the gas that you need to build them still has to be reacted in low sec, null sec, or wormholes. But Bane, no, there isn't. We'll kind of talk about it in a little bit. It's all the science skills. And what I usually tell people is pick a couple modules. We talked about kind of how to pick things to build last show. Now we focused on a couple items, but we kind of give you the idea of what to look for in G to high volume, that kind of stuff. And uh, I usually tell people to start with a couple modules, work on those modules, and as you get those modules down, then increase the amount of modules that you can that you can do with the amount of slots you have, and then work your way up from there. As far as actual skill plans, kind of the way I did it when I was starting up, because I pretty much had the same question, was, you know, I got the blueprint of something I wanted to build, and then basically right-clicked on it, went to its T2 component, and then looked at the required skills and that turned into my skill plan for that particular item. And then, yeah, as you add blueprints, you had to train a little bit more to do the next blueprint, train a little bit more to the next, do the, and pretty soon you have them all. Yeah, and then I realized that, oh, to get these data cores, I'm gonna need me some research agents. So that turned into the next training plan. Yep, and uh, when I started, agents were the only place to get those data cores now they come from faction warfare lp as well so there's a lot a lot more steady supply of them available for sure okay so this confessor blueprint we took the decryptor out it's what 28 percent it looks like no 20 percent 20.4 percent and three run me2 te4 so now we're going to put that decryptor back on it so now it has shifted to a five run ME3 TE2, but now it is 38.9%. Okay, so it's a plus 90% on the decryptor. If you mouse over, you see that plus 90 right here. The 45% is from skills and implants, but that 90% is from the decryptor. So you'll get an idea of, of where you stand on it from there. And the the thing about Tech 3 that's different from Tech 2 is this one is called a small wrecked hull section, okay? So let me take this decryptor out so I can kind of show you the difference real quick. This is small wrecked hull section. If we go with the small intact hull section, it's the same and I can make the same confessor but my base now is 20 runs and my base is 38 percent so using a decryptor with that other one oops sorry move that using the decryptor to get the 38 percent and only five runs versus this one the base is 20 runs and 38 percent so it's four times as many runs 
and the same without a decryptor. But this one costs quite a bit more. And the flip side to it is these ships take quite a while to build. So if we click this and we view an industry and you look, yeah, each ship is one day, four hours to build. Okay. So to build all 20 ships here is 23 days, seven hours. That's a long time to be waiting for ships, depending on what your goal is. If your goal is just to build a ton of them and sell them in Jita, this is perfect because it's a lot more hands-off and you have time if you're working on, say, 10 of these and you got 10 going in, that's 200 ships every 23 days. You put them in Jita, try and sell them. Meanwhile, as they sell, you buy parts for the next ones, work on making those parts to put in the runs again and take your profit type thing. Then this is a good way for hands-off, assuming the volume is high. I, I, I haven't looked at the volume. I haven't looked at sell value. I haven't looked at any of that. I'm just giving you the kind of the idea behind it. However, if you're someone who, like me, who normally gets an order, hey, I need 100 confessors. Can you have them by tomorrow? Sure, boss, I can have them for, to you by tomorrow. This plan is probably not going to work well for me, even though it may be slightly more efficient. I would be down here in the small wrecked area, go back to the first blueprint, back to this 20% in three runs, because I need to bang these things out, right? Now, there's even one more that is the small multifunctional. Let me put this in here. So this one is, get up a confessor, come on. So this one is in the middle. It's 30% base and 10 runs, but only ME2. So each, the, the point of this is each Tech 3 reverse engineering has three specific blueprints, a rect, a multifunctional, or a malfunctioned, and a intact. And each one has different base stats, and each one can be affected by the decryptor by the same percentages and the same runs. However, the base is quite a bit different. Very Now, that would be, I guess, you know, we haven't looked at it, but how big is that T3 market? Is that still big? I mean, it was, it was pretty hot about 18 months ago. Let me look it up real quick. While you're, if you don't mind me asking a question while you're looking that up, rain, rain in the dark again wants to know, how does the T2 and 3 invention compare to the recent, recently new ships from Concord and other types? Do you think that invention for the new ships to expand them in engineering? I'm not sure I fully understand where, the question. Well, the Concord ships, no. But the Glavian and the Edencom ships absolutely have Tech 2 variants. I'm, I'm doing a run of of Treglavian Tech 2 ships right now. Tech 3, probably not, but Tech 2, they're already there and uh, we're, we're at, they're absolutely being used every day in game. Okay, so the Confessor, yeah, you're probably looking at average daily rate of somewhere around 25-ish or so. So that's not, that's not very good. If you, if you produce 200 at a shot, you're probably gonna have a hard time getting, getting rid of them. Let me look well, that's, here. that's if you confine yourself to the Jita area. Correct. Now, Jack Dawes are probably up closer to 100. Yeah, you're probably 75 or 80 per day. So, you know, that's something that you could probably build a lot of those and get rid of. Days are about the same. They're probably slightly more than the Jack Dawes on average. Sveeple. Yeah, Sveeple is, yeah. 10 maybe a day if you're lucky. So, you know, there is some chance there and maybe you don't build all confessors. Maybe you build, you know, half and half Jack Dawes and Hecates and maybe a few confessors or something like that. Remember the same blueprint can build any of them. I, I don't know about cost, you know, and whether or not they're profitable, but uh, 
they're they're definitely being used for sure. Now, does that same pattern hold true? Because we were just looking at the T3 destroyers for T3 cruisers, that the one blueprint can go across all of them. Correct, yeah. Let me, uh, let me bring up one of those real quick. So here is the intact hull. So this is the highest quality one. And if you click here, you notice that you can make Legion, Loki, Proteus, Tengu. So we'll just, we'll pick Tengu for this one. So there we go. So 37.9%, same 38%, same 20 runs, same 2%. Now this 38% is affected by my skills. So it's not a base. The base is actually 26%. But for my skills, 38% is the base. I just want to make sure I cover that because I keep talking about base, but these bases are modified by my skills and there's no way to, I can't, eliminate those to tell you what it would be other than to look at this pop-up that shows up. Sorry, let me get a little drink here. That, that, no worries. I'm just looking at that going okay. So that eliminates, now the acquisition of those blueprints, that's all wormhole action, I believe, right? Correct. Yeah, as far as I know. But Jita is normally plenty well stocked on these. So it, it's it's not too bad. And then we'll go over I got some of the modules real quick too, and we'll just go over them real quick. So this one is the thruster module. So it makes the propulsion sections, whether it's the interdiction nullifier. So this would be, if you click on this one, then it makes this, and that's what you put in when you assemble the ship. There's four slots now. So this would be, if you put this in there, then you get whatever from that module that you put in, but you would also be nullified on that on that ship. And then if you click here, we'll right click here, we'll view this one. Yeah, your base input materials again, which is yep. yep, yep, which is good. Okay, so we're kind of I think we're kind of done on this. I'll show one more. This one's the power core. So this is the one that does your main electronics. Yeah, so this is electronic efficiency gate. This is the one for the Tengu. And like I said, there's four of these that match the four sections, propulsion, it, uh, it electronics, engineering? defense, and and I don't remember what, what the other what one is, is it now. All, I think it's offense it's still, unless they change the yeah. name. Yeah, I don't know. They, I, after they changed them all, I never paid attention. They changed them all a few years ago. We went from five to four. But anyway... It gives you all the options here. So you can make all three for the Tengu, all three for the Proteus, all three for the Loki, and all three for the Legion. And when you pick it, though, it's the same way. 38%, 20 runs. So any of the ones that are intact are the highest level of, of blueprint all gets the same. The middle level is 10 run and 30% and the lower level is three run and 20% with my skills. Obviously the, the, the base is a little bit different, but all the hull and all of the modules that go in for the cruisers are all the same across the board. So you don't have to remember a whole bunch of different stuff. They're all identical. All right. We got we another question. Rain in, rain in the dark. More questions. Awesome. Wanting to know, if trig ship types have taken over most of the production runs compared to the T1, 2, or 3. Not even close. Not, yeah, yeah. They're probably still less than 5%. The, the, there's not enough materials to make them in mass because the blueprints are drops. You can't buy the blueprints. And they're very, very niche or situational. They're not always best for everything by a long shot. And... Some of them, some of them are really good. Some of them, nah, yeah, not so much. It kind of say the same thing for my Edencom ships too. Yep, yeah, Edencom is. Well, I think one area that they were really untapped in is running Abyssal. They seem to be really good for that, but the the fit that's required for those kind of makes it crazy. So, anyway, yeah. now let's uh, let me turn off this screen and we'll get into the websites and this is where i'm going to be throwing out a lot of numbers and stuff i'm sorry it's all percentage based there's not much i can do about it 
if you're really lost, you can find Nick and I both on talking in stations in the industry section, and we can kind of help you through it. But, but uh, uh, us talking numbers? No, tell me it's not true. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just a gigantic grunch of numbers, and there's no sane way to talk about it other than, yeah. So, sorry in advance, but uh, we're going to talk about kind of some of the same things. Oh, I, one thing I do want to show, I should have shown this in the beginning. We talked about that Inquisitor real quick. I'm going to talk about a Sharon because oh, right. this is yeah, on I the just, Give me a sec. I just had to, I had to pull your screen back up. Oh, sorry. This no, is on no, the complete go ahead. other end of the spectrum. To give you an idea, 26% base, one run, and it uses 64 data cores, whereas the Inquisitor used, it was, let me get rid of this decryptor, okay. So it was 43% base, but it only uses two data cores. So there's a significant difference just in the price of the invention as it is. And we'll talk about that, but I wanted to kind of show it real quick in game before we got to that point. That way people could understand what sort of what we're talking about here. Notice this job duration is eight days for one single invention. It's eight days. And that doesn't even get in if, say you're successful, the actual production time down the road. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And this one is 36 million just to put in a single invention. So that that will affect quite a bit your your costing down the road. Okay. All right. And you're going to go ahead and pull up one of the sites so we can look at how we get those numbers and how we get our inputs. Yep. Yeah. Let me, uh, I just got to change something real quick. Yeah. No problem. Bane of the galaxy. I, I, I got to say it, man. I put in chat, says Sharon, isn't that pronounced Karen? That tickled me, man. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing and start the uh, screen sharing from my web browser. Hey, that worked. Holy crap. First time. Well, right. well, yeah. yeah. Man, oh man. Worked first time for us. That That's a rarity. I need to go play the lottery. Okay. So for people that don't know, this is Lazy Blacksmith. This is probably one of my favorite invention sites, simply just because of the way that it works. So if you would start off here, you just click on Blueprint and type in Inquisitor. So you get the IMQ Inquisitor and you hit the little invention symbol right here and it brings it up. Now from there, let's see, have to tell it where you are, Tech One Rig, and you're in high sec. And advanced industry and science and copy, that only affects time. These engineering skills down here affect your percentage. So now we'll look at it. Remember how in game I couldn't separate out the no skills? Now we can separate out the no skills. So with none, it's a base of a 30% chance and you get a single run. Your invention cost is 1.5 million, okay? And if you got an actual one that goes through, it would be 20.3 million to produce the ship. And the ship sells for, I think, 19.3, 19.5 right now. So you would lose quite a bit of ISK by building it like that. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So in order to do that, though, that 30% chance, you notice the invention cost and the Invention cost per manufacturing run are the same. That's because it's a one run blueprint. So if it if it succeeded, it cost you this much to invent it. It cost you that much to make the manufacturing run. Now notice this process decryptor down here is the same thing. One run, two million, two million, and that's what you end up with. However, we'll use the process because the numbers work out better. That 33% rate means that it failed two times and then you got one acceptance. So it actually takes three inventions to get your one 
accepted one that actually made the tech do BBC. So this invention cost is actually 6 million, not 2 million, because you have to account for those two that failed and didn't make it. So your cost to build it is actually 24 million if you go with a run one run. Does that make sense? It does to me, you know, and I, I know I've said this before, but it, I think it bears repeating <clears throat> that 33% chance. So one in three, you can anticipate getting one for every three. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. But when you're figuring the numbers, you kind of have to look at it like that. You don't really have a choice. Now, that's all with level zero skills, which you can't even do it. You have to have one to do it, but I just wanted to do the base. So now most people think level four skills are kind of, you know, where you need to be. So I'm going to crank it up to level four skills real quick. Okay. So here we are at level four skills and you notice the chance for these both went to 41%. So that the easiest way to do that is do a run of five inventions for five inventions you should get two that invent and three that fail, okay? That's 40%. So now if you look at it, I'm sorry, 45%. So yeah, you'd still, you'd be on the cusp there. But here you're looking at invention cost of a million now because your, your price went down to put it in. So you'd still be... So if two succeeded and three failed, so you would have five million, but that would be across two ships now. So it'd be two and a half million per ship. So you kind of have to read between the lines on these. It's kind of convoluted. But now if you get into some of the things where if you need to build a lot of ships quickly, remember this is a stealth bomber. So it only took what, eight hours to build. So getting a 10 run blueprint is 80 hours, that's only three and a half days or three and a third days. That's not bad if you need to pump them out. So at 24%, what that actually means is one out of every four would get you a blueprint. So if you look at 5 million times four is 20 million to get that one blueprint. And then you take that 10 million or 10 ships, I'm sorry, so you divide the 20 million by 10 ships. That's actually 2 million per invention run. And you're getting 10 ships to, to, to boot. You're going to turn out a little bit better than the two runs that you get here because you're going to get 10 runs. So five times as many ships. This actually has a hidden invention cost of 2.5 million. This is only 2 million per hull. So you save a half a million per hull and you can build five times as many hulls. So some of it's about throughput, some of it's about price. Now, and, these, gotta, oh. and again, I guess, you know, each, each inventor needs to look at what their situation is. If you're a mass builder, yeah, you need more runs. If it's more niche to you, you may not. Correct. And this takes into account the price of the decryptor too. Some of the decryptors are, are a lot cheaper than others. Typically the crappy ones are cheap and the good ones are expensive, which kind of offsets the good part of them. But that's just the way that it works out. Now for these, the reason I picked this ship is because it's a frigate and it's, it's very cheap. So the ME value here doesn't have a lot of value to it, right? It does just reduce the cost a lot. This next ship we're going to look at it re the difference in ME is huge on making that ship. So now we're going to flip over and do the RIA. Did that flip over or do I need to reshare with a different tab? Nope. I'm seeing it just flipped. Okay. It hasn't flipped on stream yet and I can't see the little inset. No, okay. so stream, stream's 20 second delay by default, I think. Ah, okay. Yep. There it goes. It just flipped on screen. Perfect. Okay. So now... I'm going to shift these to level four real quick. So now with level four skills, if you put in that share and blueprint, which remember that blueprint takes about three, three and a half days 
just to get one blueprint. So you, it's not like you can do these in mass. The, the blueprints are, are fairly slow coming out, especially if you only have one BPO. But with no decryptor, you have a 25% chance. And invention cost is 240 million. So if you have to do four inventions to get your one that works, that is a billion isk. Before you even start, you've wasted, or not wasted, but you have spent a billion isk in inventions to get your one single run blueprint. Now, it's over the folks that jaw just dropped open. Now you know why jump freighters cost so much. So now it, it only adds the price of this one run, but that gives you 16.6 .6 billion, okay, as, a, as the price just to manufacture it, okay? We all know though, this is actually 750 million higher. So it's actually, what, 17.4 million to manufacture this one? Yep. And you took 12 days or what, 14 days to produce those four blueprints to get one that worked, okay? So you can build essentially two jump freighters a month using this plan. Now, the other one that I like to do, especially for the jump freighters because of their value, is the process. This can one was I, always can I, kind can of... Can I ask a butt in, ask one quick question? Uh -huh. If someone's, you know, looking at this and going, all right, I'd really like to do this. If they spend the training time and get their skills all the way to five, is that a big difference or is it small? Okay, Let, let's let's look at this at the process. Um, that way, we get a, a difference between using a decryptor and not, and then we'll look at the skills and see how that affects it. All right, cool, good okay. call. Okay, so for the process, you, you're twenty seven percent. So you're still pretty much one in four, but your invention cost is a little bit less, or your your manufacturing cost is a little bit less. But you're still only about 400 million more, or 400 million less than a zero. So you're still pretty close, and you still get one run, okay? But your ME5 and TE10, so they build a little bit quicker. And the actual, that 400 million is your ME2 to 5 difference there, right? So you kind of eat that up in the invention cost goes back into the build cost. So it, it used to be a lot more prolific um, than it is today after 2014. But what I normally do is I look at more of the total cost after everything's done. And I wanna do one more and then we'll, we'll go to the skills. If you look at attainment or optimized attainment, you, end up with really close to 50%, 44% and 46%, okay? So every other blueprint, you're gonna get a success. So, and you're only spending 135 million at that point and you get three runs. So if you get two blueprints, which is only about six days, one of them is a success, you have three runs to build from, ME3, which is still better than the original, not quite as good as the process, but at 135 million, even if that's 270, you're still dividing it amongst three. It only takes us from 45 million to 90 million per run, and you're at 16.3, you add 45 more to that, you're at 16.4, Somewhere around there, not even 16.4. You're still at 16.3 and a lot, right? And you're cheaper than both of these, and you got three runs out of it. So you can build three jump freighters for that price, right? So that's how it, it changes and how it matters which decryptor you use, okay? Now we're going to go to level five skills and see the difference. And the slide bar goes up. Yep, so it changed at a couple percent for each of those, 
but this one it gets at 49.87 that's as close to 50 percent as you can get pretty much this one's now 47 let me go back to four and see how much actually did change so 49.87 so 3.1 percent which doesn't sound like much if you build one or five probably spit in the ocean but when you build a couple hundred of these a year that three percent is going to add up significantly over time significantly and it's not only just the invention if you're hauling parts out if you're hauling data cores out and you get more inventions in less time and you get more blueprints from less inventions that's less data cores you have to buy less capital less hauling all kinds of stuff start compounding on top of just the fact that your invention's a little bit cheaper right and if you need less parts to build a ship because you're at me3 instead of at me2 now you're saving on your build fees and you're hauling to make that extra part and this kind of stuff so there's a lot of intrinsic value i think that's the right word there's a lot of intrinsic value there other than just the fact that you're saving a little bit of isk and can make a little bit more profit and for the All folks right. that are fairly new, well, we keep referring to the ME and TE. TE is the time efficiency. That's how much from the base time gets taken off. And the same ME being the material efficiency, you know, where you're saving input materials. So all that time and money, you know, it gets saved. Okay, so we were talking about the, the percentages, and I wanted to bring this one up real quick because this is one that I build, oh, it seems like thousands. It's probably really hundreds, but when, when, when a run of these need to go off, it is, it's a pain. But this is the dual gigapulse blueprint. So, excuse me, this is, builds the dual gigapulse laser twos, which is the capital gun for avatars and also the guns for the revelation the Revelation Navy issue and that kind of stuff. So they are essentially a cruiser. They're real close to a cruiser to build. The The base minerals to build the Tech 1 is close to a cruiser, and it works out to be close to a cruiser. However, because it's a capital part, everything is increased significantly in the time it takes and this kind of stuff. To give you an idea, I'm going to I'm going to do these other skills real quick. We'll just do this and we'll click on details. We haven't looked on details yet, but the copy is 3 hours, but an invention is 9 hours and that's one invent. So if you need to make you know 100 of these, which is enough for 30 dreads, then that's quite a bit of time that's going to be sunk there. Okay? So now we'll go back to the summary just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. So this is level four skills and you're looking at the none, you're at 47%. So basically, and it's a five run. So ships are one run. Most modules and stuff are 10 run. And then all the capital stuff is five run for the most part. There's some things that are three run, I think. But it's mostly either one run, five run, or 10 run. One run is for ships, 10 is for most modules, five is for capital stuff or really expensive subcap modules. I can't remember too many of those, but for the most part, it's the capital stuff that's five run. So when you start looking at it like this and you get into like the optimized attainment, you're at 88% for a seven run. So if you do 10 events, you can almost guarantee yourself that eight of them are going to go through maybe even nine, right? That's that's a considerable percentage there. So most of the time, these you're looking for throughput. If you look at the price, they're all pretty close because the ME is doesn't affect these as much, but they're high dollar. They use a lot of inputs. If you look at the details, they're eight decryptors each to do this invent, but like I said, you normally don't do this for just one invent. You're doing this for multiples. So those decryptor start, I mean, those data cores start to add up over time. But if you do this and you get seven runs and say you put 10 inventions in, 
if you got eight of them out, that's 56 total guns to build overall. Early, early when you first right. pulled when you first pulled this up, you had mentioned that because this is a capital module, that it's you're basically building a cruiser, you know, material wise. I just wanted to point out for the folks that were when Kenneth mentioned you're looking at eight decryptors or excuse me, data cores, your cruisers also take eight. And so do your your ore mining barges, all three of them. So, yeah, it's a big piece. Right, yeah, it's and those are considered cruisers for all practical tents and purposes. So, yeah, it's 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 very much cruiser sized. But now you're at 88.29. Let's see if we go to level 5 skills where we end up. Now we're at 94%. So you went from 88 to 94, 6%. That is about an 8% increase by going from level four to level five skills, right? So the general rule of thumb, and I almost hate myself for saying this, is everybody's like level four is good enough for invention. And I would agree with that until you start getting into anything cruiser and above. Once you Once you get to the cruiser level, Level four is iffy. Battle cruisers, this kind of stuff, you start getting into, into territory where you're competing against people with level five skills and, and they're going to run you over like a bad headache. So subcap modules, frigates, destroyers, level four skills, no problem. The difference is minor. But once you start getting into cruisers, you really need to start looking at stuff from a, a little bit different angle and looking at, hey, now if I'm getting into industry this much, training these extra skills and they suck to train, they're like 25 days a piece, 27 days a piece for each of the science skills, but they are, they are definitely worth it if you're going to be in this for the long haul. And Again, the 3% here, the 4% there, the 6% there, that sounds like a, a very tiny portion. But when you're doing this hundreds or thousands of times a year, two, three, four, five years, it makes a gigantic difference at and the end. Another piece of that is you talk, we talk about the percentages, you know, that's, oh, it's a one, two, three, four percent difference. For the folks that also do PvP, which I think if you're an Eve, you probably do, think of how much people will spend for a module that gives them a one, two, or three percent advantage. And now you can see where that you know that matters in Eve. Sorry, I'm just looking something up here real quick. Let me see if I can do it. Oh, got me curious. And now this is a surprise part of the show where Kevin or <laughs> Keith is pulling up. Keith, Kevin, whoever the heck you are. Yeah. Kenneth. Ah, okay. So, yes, I can pull it up. Okay, let me choose a facility. So, let's see. Where is the production center? There we go. Okay, and we crank this up to 10. Crank that up to 10. Okay. Oh, wow, that's all you get. Okay. So, we're we're over an hour here, so let me get my last two things in, and then we can we can go along our merry way. Tech two BPOs. I get asked all the time, "Oh, should I buy a Tech two BPO?" Blah blah blah. And I'm going to give you a really really quick level of why they absolutely will not return your ISK in any amount of time, and the reason that they have devalued so much over time. To give you an idea, I had well over 200 of them and I sold them all in 2013 before the Creus expansion came out because I knew that CCP Grayscale absolutely hated them and was gonna do everything to make them horrible. And he did a good job. He devalued them significantly and he, he did it in a way that was kind of underhanded and it took people quite a while to, to figure it out. 
So we're gonna we're gonna go over this real quick, and I'll even use level four skills so that it's not it's not too crazy. Okay, can you bring up my screen share real quick? It is done. Okay, and I'm even gonna do this in high sec. And and in null sec, it's it's even it's even worse, but it's it'll be an apples to apples comparison. Okay. So that Inquisitor blueprint took 30 minutes to do. Okay. So if I did 10 of those, that would take me 300 minutes or five hours. So in five hours, I could do 10 inventions. So the first 10 inv and the inventions only take eight hours or something. So I could easily do this two times a day with no problem and not stay up all night and alarm clock or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. The other thing that you could do is run multiple copies and run multiple inventions, and you could time them a lot easier so that you could make this work. But for practical tense and purpose, and you could always buy a second, a third, a fourth Inquisitor blueprint because they're frigates, they're, they're dirt cheap. They're only a couple hundred thousand isk each. So like most of the frigates, I run 10 blueprints. That way I can do 10 copies simultaneously. But that's a little bit larger scale. We'll, we'll stick to the smaller scale and why tech do blueprints don't work at a small scale. And then I'll let your imagination run wild with how much large scale can make this happen. So if you stick with strictly the augmentation decryptor right here, now we're not necessarily talking about cost. We can, if you want to nail down the cost, we can work on that a little bit different way. But if you just look at this augmentation, so if we did 20 runs of copies and you have 25% success rate, then you are looking at roughly four successes, okay? And you can do that roughly every three days, okay? So now, you're looking, and that would be a 10 run. So you can make 40 purifiers every three days. You do that over the course of 30 days, you can make 400 of them because there's 10 three-day sections per month, right? So you can make 400 purifiers per month. If you have a tech do BPO and you put it in, you can only build 67 a month. That's with max skills. Okay. So say, because these won't be quite as efficient, say the 67 you built from a Tech 2 BPO make you 3 million ISK a piece. You build 67, 3 million ISK, that's 200 million that you make in profit for an entire month. Okay. But even if the 400 only make one and a half million profit instead of that 3 million. I built 400 of them. I've made 600 million profit in that, same, in that same time period. So I made double the profit and I didn't have to spend 40, 50, 60 billion on that blueprint and sink all that capital just to start building. Now, do you have a little bit more of a time sink in the skills to do the invention? Yes. But as you build up to that point, you'd be building modules and that kind of stuff along the way. So, yeah, they don't remove the Tech 2 BPO because they don't have any way to compensate people for it. Back in 2013, when they were leading up to the Creus expansion, there was a ton of talk about it. and so rather than to deal with the ramifications of trying to remove them and people with a ton of them getting mad and, and it's just, there's no upside to removing them. But if you make them so that they still work, but they don't disrupt the market. Prior to Creus, there were several markets, Hulks being one, Rapiers and Sabres. If you did not own a tech do BPO, there is no way that you competed in those markets. They were just 
shut off to everybody unless you had that blueprint because the blueprints produced more than the market could bear by and large. And invention was so horrible, especially for ships back then, that it was just a nightmare to even try and produce them. That I, like even me, I was just like, if I don't have that tech two BPO, nope, I'm good. Let someone else make a Falcon, right? Because I had rapier BPOs. So well, another another uh, thing I was just thinking about, and I don't know how valid it is. They're probably, you know, because I'm not a T2 BPO owner. They're probably not used anywhere near to the degree they used to be. But with them still in existence, they're a great vanity item. They're still causing ISK to change hands as people want to buy. You know, I want one. I want one in my in my station. I want to own one. So they, they still provide value to the game in that respect also. Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, and they still change hands, but not nearly for the ISK they used to. I mean, a Sabre BPO used to go for $300 billion. Now you'd be lucky if you probably got 80 to 100 for one. But just the return on your investment, the last time I checked the few that I saw for sale, you were looking at 20 to 25 years to get a return on your investment. That's just, that's insane. You know, if 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 you were trying to sell that in in the real world, people would laugh you right out of the building, right? So I, I don't know why it works in Eve, but you know, other than the vanity reason, by and large, they're just not. Now you think about this like this. Now I'm going to raise these up to level five skills. Work. So now you're well over 25 percent on this right here. But if you look at some of these other ones, you're at 40% here with eight runs. So now if you take those same 20 invents and you get eight blueprints and each of those eight blueprints make six and make eight runs each. Now you're at 64 ships every three days. So now you multiply that out over the month and you're at 640 ships a month. So almost 10 times what a Tech 2 BPO can produce. And if you make one and a half million on each one of those ships, now you're at a billion ISK or 960 million of profit for the year or for the month, sorry. So yeah. the scale now you figure that with someone who has, you know, seven or 800 invention slots and 10 BPOs that they can make copies from, and you start going from there. There was a well-known high sec ganker that was in PL for a while named Globby. And I'm sure a lot of people remember Globby. He's been in Goons. He's been all over. But while he was in PL, he asked me one time, it was right before e vegas in october and it was a couple weeks before and it was like a tuesday he's like dude i'm gonna do a lot of ganking this weekend can you start building me purifiers said, sure no problem how many do you need he goes i don't i don't care just build me as many as you can <laughs> he did, he, okay he did not think that through yeah so this was tuesday on friday i dropped off 3800 purifiers and he was like, whoa, whoa, stop, stop, just stop. I was like, well, dude, there's already another 4,000 in the cooker. He's like, oh, God damn, stop, stop. And he saw me at Vegas and he was just like, I just, I never ever in my mind, crossed my mind that someone could just go that nerd crazy and start pumping them out. Now, so, realist, realistically, Kevin, there are, God, why do I keep wanting to say Kevin? Kenneth. There's maybe a half a dozen to 10 people that do industry at that scale in EVE. You know, that ain't, that ain't me, that's for sure. Right, but it, but it still, I'm just kind of showing you the difference between a tech do BPO and someone who is, you know, smaller scale, who could do it, you know, 10 runs at a time, that type of thing. And then kind of your mind can wander that this is the top of the, the, the heap 
and there's a lot in the middle, right? So we talked about a tech do BPO, a small scale, and then the high end, and then there's everything in the middle that that you can also think about as compared to the tech two BPO. One of the questions in in chat came out of Recon Cab. By the way, hi Con, how you doing, Recon? It you know basically is asking, do you think they need to increase the chance of success on invention, or are we in a sweet spot right now? No, yeah, it's 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 actually quite good. I I, I yeah, I, I don't have too many. The only thing that I think is really bad is the invention times on capital stuff. It's just onerous. It caused me to make a lot more BPOs. I do a lot more inventions than I need to because the invent times take so long and the build times take so long. If I need to build 50 of something, I do so many inventions that instead of using like all four or eight or whatever I get out of the run, I do enough inventions that I use two of each to make them build quicker, but then I have six left on that BPC. So I've got some for the next time. So I don't have to do as inventions as often, but it's still a, a pain to deal with. Okay. So yeah, I kind of the bottom line on that is the sweet spot for invention right now has almost negated the use of a T2 BPO and which is good for the vast majority, especially the smaller or even larger builders. You see how your time and volume can be increased using, you know, the invention system. So that overall, I think is pretty healthy for the market or for the game. Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. I've got one last thing that show up here because this is something that Eve has done. And in 20 years, uh, you know, I, I started playing right after the it came out. I have never seen this done before, and uh, wanted to let people know kind of what's going on. So maybe you can take advantage of it. Maybe you can't. Some people can, but I still want to let people know. Right now in Eve, if you look at your launcher, there is a Plex sale going on and an Omega sale going on at the same time. Normally, they're offset by a week or two. This is the first time I've ever seen them run concurrently. If you're Daddy Warbucks and you have a lot of accounts, and you and this is mainly for the people who pay by credit card, but even those of us that pay by Plex, this is somewhat enticing on a on a on a on a larger scale. So right now in game if you go to buy one month instead of 500 plex it's 400 plex it's 960 for three months 1680 for six months instead of 2100 it's 2880 for 12 months instead of the normal 3600 and it's 52 for two years instead of 6600 okay so it's quite a discount if you use Pex, Plex to pay for your Omega. But the Plex is also on sale. So if you look down here at the bottom at the, hold on, let me scroll down. This is the, this is the Plex pack where you get 3,000 Plex, okay? It normally costs $125. But right now, it's on sale for $106. You get 3,000 Plex. You take that 3,000 Plex and you put it into Omega, 2,880 Plex. For a year, you pay the equivalent of $8.50 a month for the game, and you have 120 Plex left over that you can sell on the market or keep or whatever you want. That is by far the cheapest way that I've seen to play Eve for a single person paying by credit card for a single account. Now, like most things in Eve, when you start scaling stuff, it goes off the rails quickly. So I'm gonna take you to the other end of the scale. If you are in a position where you have say five or six accounts and you can buy the 20,000 Plex pack. 
Normally it's six hundred and fifty dollars. It's on sale for five fifty two right now. That's twenty thousand plex. You can get six accounts for a year at twenty eight eighty per account. That works out to six dollars and sixty three cents per month. Now, for you accounts. folks, for you folks doing the mental uh, math in your head, I'm one of those five account people. That's a hundred bucks a month on a credit card. You can see what this would save me, and probably will. Yeah, it's it's definitely there. And then, it, say you had three accounts, right? And you bought the twenty thousand, and you put fifty two eighty per account. That's 15700 800 somewhere around there. $6.08 a month per account, right? That, that's huge in a saving sense. However, I understand not everyone can afford to put the, I, I get it, right? But I know that there's a couple of people in my alliance who have five, six accounts. They were all coming due in the next couple of months rather than letting them just renew on the credit card, even at the savings price of what, $130 a year, which is like for the, the multiple account discounts, about ten fifty a month, something like that, I think, isn't it? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. yeah, if you do this and you get it down, you go from 10 something a month down to 6 63 a month. So oh, that's a 40% savings on top of, the, the multi-account discount that's already available to you. And this sale is only until the 28th. So what, Tuesday at downtime. Hey, one of, the, one of the requests in there, if possible, can you post this somewhere in the uh, Discord so that folks can have a look at it and see if it's right for them? Yeah, I'll, I'll post it in the, in the Discord, but I'm not going to post it in Reddit. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Reddit's a cesspool that I... Yeah. Toss yeah. it in the indie section or someplace more appropriate. But yeah, yeah, that's great info. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I realize not everybody is, everyone's in a different financial situation. Not everyone can take advantage of it. I, I'm not trying to say, you know, go borrow money to do it. But if you're already paying by credit card and you're paying this much and this sale can now make you pay this much, then, you know. It might be worth something. looking at. And I've never seen this before. I don't know if it's going to happen again. This is not a CSM thing. We don't get involved in any of the sales. We normally find out about them just like everybody else when they pop up on our launcher. Sometimes if we have a Thursday meeting, it'll get mentioned to us, hey, this weekend we're going to have a Plex sale. I'm not a salesman for my own company. I freaking hate sales. I, I don't even like doing this for Eve, except for it's such a benefit to the player, I couldn't let this go, right? The benefit to the player here is massive, even though it does help Eve and CCP, yeah, I got it. But at the end of the day, if you're going to pay 10 something a month and you can pay 6 something a month, that's a much more benefit to the player than Eve, so I'm okay with with talking about it. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, cause I, I saw something in our in our Discord about it, and I kind of just glanced over it, but it never became really obvious because I didn't crunch the numbers until looking at that. And it's like, ouch! I may have to stick a crowbar in my wallet and deal with it. Yep, yep, absolutely. And with all that extra time, now you have time to train all your extra science skills to do the invention. One of the earlier questions means we're wrap, in the wrap-up phase. One of the earlier questions I kind of missed on deliberately was about a training plan, you know, for a new starting out industrialist. And I'd like to save that for one of the next shows on this because there's a number of variations and paths you might want to take, which will we'll kind of give some options, some pros and cons, and then... Okay, it's Kenneth and I are going to look at it from two different scales. I'm going to look at it from, you know, the smaller to midsize and down. Kenneth's idea of a skill plan is more of a top, or, you know, from his scale of industry. I've also got one friend who's 
pretty established in the midsize might drag him in also, because that way you get three different opinions on that very topic. Yep. Yeah, we always got to have a reason to come back next week or the week after or whenever I'm not traveling and you're not working and we can get these shows and we don't have technical difficulties along the way. Oh, no, we're always going to have our technical difficulties. All right. Any last minute questions you guys want to throw in there? We're probably not going to take because we're both ready to move on. We got family and things to happen. It's been great having you all here. Loved it, Kenneth. Uh, you know, if I see, I got your name right. Any last words? Nope. Just uh, you and I are available on the Talking Stations Discord pretty much all the time. We're both East Coast based, so it gives you an idea of kind of our time zone. But uh, if you have any questions, more than help, more than happy to help. A couple of things I don't do, you know. What's the best thing for me to produce? I, I can't answer that. I, I don't know your situation. I don't know how much capital you have. I don't know your skill level, this kind of stuff. So I kind of shy away from those questions. I've been getting a lot of that lately. But if you watch last show, we kind of go over what it takes to figure out what you want to build and what you can build profitably. From there, once you make up those decisions and you say, hey, I want to build X, Y, or Z, I'm more than happy to work with you to try and help you build that efficiently, that kind of stuff, and uh, and what skills you need to, to get that done. All right. Got nothing else. Appreciate y'all stopping by and hanging out with us. And once again, I'm Nick Bison, and we've had Kenneth Feld from our CSM, and really appreciate y'all coming by. Have a good day.